Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. Well, it's official. General Motors will stop making its full-size rear-wheel drive cars after the 1996 model year. That means a year or so from now, you'll no longer be able to buy a new Buick Roadmaster, Cadillac Fleetwood, Chevrolet Caprice, or the muscular Chevy Impala SS. And it also means you'll never be able to buy a very special Impala SS we recently tested. And that's too bad, since a big car has never been badder. Uh, here's a car that really nobody uh, with a grandfather's car, you know, and you know, it was a, it, you know, my dad's car, etc. And here we changed that with some very subtle changes for, to put a performance engine, tires, wheels on, and, and here we dropped the, the buying age, you know, from the, from the 50s on up down to the you know 30s and 40s. In fact, I got, you know, I got uh, kids in the 20s, and here they say, boy, we want to drive that car, you know. And what, what a difference the style and, and the performance in, image can make to a vehicle. That's the man, GM power wizard John Moss, and the philosophy that created the coolest big GM car in years, the Chevrolet Impala SS. A car that, with its head-turning monochrome paint scheme, best in sinister jet black, brawny 260 horsepower small block V8 engine, and brilliant combination of brakes, tires, and suspension, proved that GM's biggest platform could deliver big driving fun. So much fun, in fact, that even hardcore sports car fans on our staff had to be pried out of the big bruiser. And one has even taken up permanent residence in our staff parking lot. But while the General has decided that its full-size cars are no longer marketable, Mr. Moss still sees a lot of potential in them. So he built this car. Like the last Chevrolet Impala SS we sampled, this one-off engineering exercise is big, black, and bristling for action. But this SS is different. For a start, there's extra minutes under that glistening ebony finish, such as this heavily modified version of the stock 5.7 liter LT1 V8, which now makes 308 horsepower and 334 pound-feet of torque. That's actually more horsepower than the Corvette. The LT1 cylinder heads have been ported and polished. The iron block reboard, cleaned, and the crank balanced. Then everything reassembled using the best race engine blueprint techniques. This small block on steroids exhales through a purpose-built stainless steel exhaust system with pipe diameter set at two and a half inches. The sounds are wonderful. Gear changes are by way of a six-speed manual, that's right, manual gearbox, pirated not from the Corvette, but from the Camaro Z28. It's a Borg Warner T56 and required reworking of the transmission tunnel so it would fit. Throws are precise but made for long-armed Americans. And at the end of that reach, the result is, you guessed it, more rip. This big beast stomps from zero to 60 in six seconds flat, two seconds faster than a stock SS. Moss installed a torque arm to prevent axle wind-up. The quarter mile roars by in an equally brief 14.7 seconds at 98 miles per hour. No other 4,200 pound family sedan we know can do that. With its massive stump pulling torque, this Impala from hell is more fun to launch than an F-16. And while not even Mr. Moss will claim that this Impala turns like an F-16, it certainly outhandles the already impressive standard car. That's thanks to the addition of adjustable Bilstein shocks at both ends. They refine the SS's already stout suspension that comes direct from the Caprice Police Package. Tires may look like the stock SS's 50 series 17 inchers, but we know their special compound is unusually tacky. They turn this big boulevard cruiser into a car that's much more at home on mountain switchbacks without giving it the ride qualities of an earth mover. Very impressive. As were the anti-lock equipped four-wheel disc brakes, averaging 112 foot stopping distances. The only change here was a more aggressive compound for the pads. All this mechanical mayhem must have worn out those adventuresome GM engineers. This Impala's interior is pretty much stock. Only the manual shifter and a small tachometer attached to the gauge cluster hint at anything unusual. Otherwise, it's business as usual. The seats are still comfortable, but the lack of lateral support that we complained of before is even more pronounced with the increased performance. Otherwise, we have no real complaints. The back seat is still huge, fit for a family outing to nowhere fast. Ditto the massive 20.4 cubic foot trunk, 
This is a big reason police and cabbies love these cars. And we'll say little about fuel economy, although even with plenty of burnouts, we still manage to keep it in double digits. How could we resist? And a car that was so obviously built for good old hot rod fun. And a car that, unfortunately, will never see production. Nor will, even more unfortunately, the even hairier 545 horsepower big block version of the Impala SS that John Moss recently completed. So we'll enjoy this one-of-a-kind Impala SS while we can. And someday, look back on a time when General Motors built the biggest, baddest cars in town.